Good morning, everyone. We thank the Lord for the privilege has given us this morning, even for our last uh, Sunday for 2019. I don't know if you could still talk about that. On the very first uh, Sunday we had, we were expecting, we were praying, we were believing that the Lord would give us a wonderful year. And now we are here on the last Sunday, reminiscing, reviewing, assessing. Everything about what God did to us in doing our lives, but also how we can also relate to Him as our God. I request everyone to please stand as we're going to read the Word of God. We'll be reading Exodus chapter 3. We'll start reading verse 1 up to the 10th verse. I'll read the first verse and then we'll follow on the second up to the 10th verse. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock on the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see his great sight. Why the bushes and burned? And he said, Go on one night, either put out thy shoes from all thy feet, for the place where all those standards is to lay ground. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, this mark in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their past masters, cry of their sorrows. Now therefore behold the violence of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them all together. May the Lord bless the people of this word and this word. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Glorify yourself, O Lord. We had so many varied experiences in this past year, past years, in time of soul, with your curiosity. In time of strength, you have challenged us to pursue you, to serve you. In times of goodness, you became our great physician, our healer. And thank the Lord for these experiences. That we came to know you as our God. And the only response, and this is what we were created in the first place, is to praise you, to thank you, to worship you. May Lord, at the end of this year, may we find ourselves again in this very place, in the very moment, to worship you and thank you for who you are and what we're doing and what we're doing in our lives. Bless your word and our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe I would not be giving God the glory this morning if I would come to you and share with you and talk to you about what we have done for the last, last year. In other words, I will be bringing to you all the good things and all the accomplishments that we have done. That's why we are here, and we want to let the world know that this is who we are, what we are. I am saying that because every single thing that has happened in the last year is placed only by the grace of God. And we are just there to taste, to experience who God is. So 
So when I was thinking of sharing with you the word of God in relation to evaluating, remembering, considering, appraising, ascending this year, I want to go back and my thoughts just would let me have this mind of you as God's people for what is really dear to our hearts and dear to God. And that would be why God has created us and why God has made us survive the 2019. And as we look for 2020, may the coming year would be the year that we could apply the blessings, the lessons that we have learned. And this morning, I will specifically bring to you how God has brought these people and learning from their experience the very purpose of God, why God has chosen them to worship Him, to honor Him, to glorify Him. We have read passages that many of us would like to believe right away that God was remembering His people. God had pity on His people. That was the very reason that He wanted to bring them out. But really at the end of the day, why God is trying to take His people out of Egypt? Why did the God of all these experiences, His deliverance, His teaching, His rebuke, His discipline, what was God doing to His people? And in the last thing also, we would like to find ourselves, what was God doing in 2019? Or years even before 2019, in our walk and in our relationship with God? So if you have your Bibles with you, in these few verses you realize that the very reason that is stated in the very few verses here that we read, so that the Lord would rescue them. In other words, in many of our experiences in the last year, or this, this year, we like to think that when we pray for deliverance, for healing, it's because we want to be healed, we want to be comfortable, we want to take that God will take, out, take us out of our problems. But I want to tell you that that's not the end of it. That's not the very purpose. Because if that is the very purpose, so that I would feel comfortable, so that I would receive the blessing that I'm asking from God, many of us right now will be questioning, why not do even answer my prayer for my family, for other people, even to the ultimate human tragedy, even unto death? Why do we allow these things to happen to us? It's because we are so focused, we are so centered on what we could get from God. Rather than what God really intends us to know, to be. And right now, as we assess, as we try now to look at what really God wanted to accomplish in our lives. So based on what we have read, I want to use this for our meditation this morning. The very purpose why God wants to deliver His people is because in verse, verse 18, look at chapter 3, verse 18. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come down the elders of Israel and the king of Egypt. And he shall say unto them, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice. To the Lord our God. It seems that on the circumstances surrounding of what this passage is talking to us, it seems that God was telling Moses, I'm going to free them from slavery. But the very reason I'm freeing them from slavery is not for them to be comfortable. So that they would come to me and sacrifice and worship. Now think about that. It's not teaching us this morning that anything and everything that has happened to us would draw us to Him. I know that He's going to solve our problems. I know that He's going to heal us. Or probably not. And yet at the end of it, God is trying to draw us to Himself. That at the end of the day, it's about my worship, it's about my praise, it's about my gratitude. So coming at the end of this year, some of us may be jumping up and down because of some prayers that have been answered. Some of us probably are still thinking, God, why you are not answering my prayer? 
But probably that is really the very purpose of God, not answering your prayer or answering your prayer, but to what end? The word of God will tell us to worship Him, to honor Him, to praise Him. Now this is not an isolated thought. Because when we're reading, many of us would miss it. Reading the book of Exodus, we are really thinking of God is worshiping His people, God is delivering His people. So in chapter 5 verse 3, talking to Pharaoh, and he said that the God of the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey to the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. On verse 8, the response, and the tail of the bricks which they made heretofore, ye shall lay upon them, ye shall not diminish of their all. For they, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Some other verses, even in verse 17, talking about, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. And the same things will be repeated in chapter 8, verse 8. So, in other words, the very people that were going to Pharaoh, they were not asking Pharaoh, Pharaoh, make, make our labor light on us. You know we're slaves, you know human rights will come to Egypt and help us. They will be barred in coming into the US, those who have participated in slavery. Now at the outset, we know that the people will be directed to the kind hand of God in delivering them. But God is going to do that, not because only to make them comfortable, so that he would have this time with his people. So using this passage, using this story, I want us to look at what God has for us as, as his people. So really today, if you're really thinking of something that we like to thank as the blessings for 2018, some of us are very happy, or some of us are very disappointed with God. For some of us are still believing, longing, or probably already in the verse of this very thing. But I want to tell you this morning, not really for my comfort, that it would be for his glory, that I would learn to know more about him, that even in my weakness, in my sickness, or even in my trouble, in my tears, today to come and say, God, this is what we need to understand. This is what we need to see over and above our experiences. And we realize that this is really God made us survive today that we could come and worship. If you're going to study the book of Exodus, you will realize that these people didn't really know God that much. Now I am saying that is because in our worship, that is our purest response to who God is. I'm going to love Him. I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to thank Him. I'm going to commit my life to Him. And anything that I do in this life, whether it would be singing the choir or giving financial help to the church, or anything that I would do, it is the expression on how I value God, how I worship God. Unless I think that it is just another religion where I could show off my good things, my good works. But since this is has to do with God and Him alone, anything that I do, it is my act of worshiping my God. Now having said that, it is always a desire that you are not just attending a service. You will come to worship the God. For many of us who have seen 
Jesus. For some of us, we are looking for somebody that you have the taste of his love, and probably at this very moment, you too would have the privilege to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, I am saying that is because sometimes we don't know him that much. So, in other words, we worship him in a way that we would only would try to make out of this God. So let me just reiterate some basic things in relation to who this God is. I want to say that God is unchangeable. He's unchangeable in his character. He's unchangeable in his attribute. In other words, God is love and he will always be love. God is holy and he will always be holy. God is righteous. God is just, God is wrong, God is merciful, God is gracious, He does not change. Now what is opposite to this is being whimsical, being the word by your own swings, being unpredictable, being changeable. Now I have said this is because you know many times when we pray, are we really thinking that we are facing the changing God? In other words, he would be loving 100%. He would be just 100%. And I don't know if you consider this. And if you consider this, I want you to really put this in your heart. Nothing that you will ever do that could ever change his love toward you. In other words, I'm not coming to this church so that I would get some marriage. I am in this church to give God the praise, the thanksgiving, the worship that he deserves. Because even though I don't deserve anything from him, he is loving, he is merciful, he is gracious, he is slow to anger, but also he is just, he is righteous, he is holy, he is unchanging God. Now I'm saying that because I don't know how many of us have been in the we have failed God. And probably we can even just look up to God, just like the public of just God is it. I want to tell you part of is a changing God. The very reason that you are still here today for the purpose of worship and praise and thanksgiving, the very purpose, even though that we have failed him, his goodness, his forbearance, his bringing a stand to himself and to repentance. Now some of you would say, so pastor, we can do whatever we want. We do not really aspire to doing things for God. Even just living in sin in a way we couldn't do or not do anything that would ever change the love of God. The word of God tells us that the love of God constrained us, talking about the motivation. I'm, I'm asking you, if you are thinking that you would do bad things in spite of the goodness of God, what is your motivation? My motivation of loving God, I love that according to the word of God because God loved me first. In other words, as a recipient of the love of God, I could not, after the work of the Holy Spirit, respond back to God doing evil things. So if the word of God is working in my heart and in your heart, the Holy Spirit would make it that our response to who that is is the changed heart, the changed life, the changed way of doing things in relation to my worship, my thanksgiving, rather than looking at what I'm going to do to deserve God's grace. Many times, many times, God's people, through all history, they are worshiping God, the God that they do. And I hope in 2019, our worship is based on not how and what we make out of who this God is, but really of who He is as is revealed, revealed in the Word of God. If our worship is then based on biblical theology, I know we would do things that many would like to think 
Dan kayak Not according To how God has prescribed In his word To serve the Lord Now let me explain you know, I've been talking some things That probably Not really into the things That we are thinking right now In this, in this, in this last Sunday But you know, people would like to serve God And you would hear You would hear things like this Come as you are Probably just on any Whatever shape or form Come to church And we got to accept this anyway So when people would Dress up for church We would say oh that's That's tradition You know these things you know they're happening But really when we look up to God And all this And then Even, even a very similar medicine, the high medicine one time, have even put up an article about worship war. Worship war because there have been churches that have been quarreling over music. So now churches are changing the way they're approaching even their music because they said this is not acceptable to the young people. So in a worship, we have to tweak it a little bit so that this would be relevant to our communication. Now let's go back to the essence of worship. Worship has nothing to do with what we want. Worship has nothing to do with my preferences. In other words, if my church is doing this, I will never be so proud that we are doing this. And also reminding us here we don't have this church. We are not exalting or being saved. We're not exalting our word-centered worship. That it takes so much time in the study of the word of God. Why? This is a response to who God is. Not that we're going to look blue better than others. New Testament would have an example like this. When the Pharisees, as what Jesus would say, that they would pride themselves or their prayers. They would be in the corners of the streets praying, showing their religiosity. What I'm trying to say here, there are so many things that we're doing here, that we're doing it because of God. Not because we are better than others. We want to be the best in everything that we do. In our choir, in our in the way that we, we conduct our worship, the way we conduct ourselves when we come to God. We want to be the best. Not because we want to show to the world that don't have these churches better than other churches. That would be right. That would be shameful to the man. That he alone is worthy of what we do. Now having said that, Many months back, Marty Sanson, who had been 20 years producing worship music for the Hill Song, all of a sudden made headlines. It's because he said something on his faith. Now, this is only a few weeks after Just Harris also said something on his faith. And many people were so surprised. Why these Christian leaders or influencers were already turning their back from the Christian faith? But I find it very interesting. I was reading last night of uh, his uh, post in the Instagram. Mark Samson talks about how many miracles happen. Not many. No one talks about it. What is the Bible full of contradictions? No one talks about it. How can God be loved, yet sent for billion people to a place almost without belief? No one talks about it. Christians can be the most judgmental people on the planet. They can also be sometimes the most beautiful and loving people. But it's not for me. 
No answer that because for 20 years have been producing worship songs. For the last 20 years, people even copied the songs that have been produced by what they call this film song in Australia. And then all of a sudden, one of the main person there realized, oh, the Bible has many different teachings. The miracles, are you seeing them today? How about, how about Christian people who are just sprinkled? How about God sending people to hell, billions of them, because they did not believe? I am saying that it's because how would you worship God and God and give you I want to believe that still one of the greatest miracles. God is doing today in 2019, and if God will, will not come next year and many years from now, one of still the greatest miracle that He is doing in the people in Panay, in the Philippines, and in the world is still the saving of one's soul. How God could do when a man that is so Rebellious against God, wretched, everything that he would think about is about himself. Anything about God. And then the rest will come, everything will change. The things that he did, did not want before, now he is loving them. The God that he rebelled and he has fought against, now he is the God that he is loving. That is the greatest miracle every single day. And many times, I would have an unbelieving heart. Just another day of ministry, just another day of whatever, whatever. I bring myself, especially one of the ministries, with the book of Solar When really you could see night and day, 